Welcome everybody. We're going to call the meeting of the Board of Directors to order. Uh, it's 3.45 and Jenny, Jenny has agreed to give us our invitation. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for bringing us all here safely today. We thank you for the mild weather, for people that have had to travel and people that are going to be traveling through the holidays. Lord, I know we like to see the white Christmas, but we just thank you sometimes for the mild weather also for keeping everybody safe. We thank you for this day, and we thank you for the people that are here, and we thank you for this park, Lord. We, we thank you that so many people care about this park. We, we're so grateful for the administration, for the board, for the members, and Lord, we just thank you for, for just being with us and, and walking us through things that are new and different. And thank you for just bringing us all together as one. Please be with us all during this Christmas season that we can celebrate your birth, Lord. And thank you that it's just such a great time of the year to get together with family and friends. Please be with us as we go through this meeting. In thy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to also take this opportunity to stand and say the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. I'm going to take a few minutes here and take member comments. We may not be able to answer questions at this time. We'll note them and possibly be able to answer them later if anybody has any comments they'd like to make. Looks like we're good. Okay. Um, Kimberly, could you take the roll call, please? Yes. Alan Carpenter? Here. Rick Dank? Yes. Brian Tully? Here. Jenny Heger? Here. Jim Huck? Here. Kelly Johnson? I'm Kelly Johnson? Kelly, are you here? Here. <laughs> Dennis King? Chad Ostrom? Here. Paul Pavel? Here. The next item on the agenda is the approval <coughs> of the minutes from the, for the last regular meeting on September 20th, 2019. Um, if the board could take a look and see if there's any questions or issues for the minutes. Paul looks good to me. <coughs> yeah, I don't see anything. Okay, if everything looks good, can I have a motion to accept? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same signs. Motion passed. The next item is the approval of new park members. Jim, you have the list there. Do you have any idea what the breakdown is? Um, a lot. A lot? <laughs> <laughs> is that an official a lot? Uh, let me see if it's a... No, but I'll count them up and get back to you. Okay. Okay. Um, can I have a motion? To oh. accept these so members? Second. All in favor of this motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passed. Yeah, if you could give us maybe that information later, Jim, everybody's yeah. always kind of curious. To see how those how those pan out. Not not just quantity, but 
uh, employed and retired demographics, yeah, if possible. I know you don't have a, maybe not all at your fingertips. We'll have that. We'll have that. Pull that out of the out of the system. Okay. okay. So that'd be great. Share that after the fact. Then. Yep. Okay. That's good. Okay. The next item on the agenda are comments from the chairman, who is absent, and in his place, I am really not prepared to make a lot of comments. But I would like to thank the members of the finance committee for your dedication and hard work, and taking your time to go over these things and review them and approve them. Jeff? <clears throat> yes, thank you. Um, real quick, just some comments from, uh, from the operations side. Um, we've had, uh, as we continue to evaluate the, the staff and, and how we're running operations, we've made some um, additional changes to, to the staff. One, as we looked at the team, we've identified that there's a uh, human resource gap. Um, miss, you know, we, we need to fill that gap. Kimberly is doing a phenomenal job, but she's our director of uh, she's our finance uh, CFO. She's our director of HR, and she's also uh, engaging in IT. And um, so, in order to get Kimberly some help, we've uh, gone out and hired a new HR um, manager, actually HR assistant. Uh, she'll report directly to Kimberly. Her name is uh, Jamie Bogema. Okay. <clears throat> and um, she's got 20 plus years of experience in HR. <clears throat> right now, our systems and our process are very manual and to make certain that we're compliant with the Department of Labor and, and Michigan state laws and, and things of that nature. Um, we want to make certain that um, Kim's doing a great job and we want to make certain that we have um, a specialist in that area on staff. So she will be full-time, she'll start after the first of the year, and um, she will also be helping out with our recreation activities as well. So partnering with uh, Nikki Ogilwin on uh, recreations. So she will start after the first of the year. Um, many of you have seen in the footprints, um, our friend uh, Kelly Blackman, um, who's been here for many years, uh, passed away. That was, uh, that's another gap that we needed to to fill and rather than go out and uh, hire an additional um, resource uh, on the team, Kathy Brott has raised her hand and said she would be willing to take on some of uh, Kelly's old responsibilities. So when you come into uh, the admin office, Kathy will no longer be in her office at the hallway. She's actually moving down into the sales area. Um, she'll be working um, where Kelly Blackman used to sit and she'll be handling some of the camping uh, sales activities, as well as she'll continue to be my my executive administrative assistant. Um, her priority will continue to be the the board of director meetings and committees and things of that nature. Um, but she'll start getting training in January to take on some of Kelly Blackman's uh, old responsibilities. So that'll take place after the first year as well. <clears throat> and then uh, we get a lot of comments on, hey, what do we do during the off-season? Uh, we do uh, a lot of things during the off-season, mainly uh, preparation for the upcoming season. So um, what I've handed out to the board is um, really an update, and I do have some additional copies here if anybody else would like to take a look at them. Um, we held our first strategic planning event, uh, sent to the, the board the actual presentation and the notes from that event and um, follow-ups that the, the, the team has. But in, in this packet, um, you know, the highlights were we broke the team out into uh, different groups and walked through our strengths, weaknesses, uh, opportunities, and threats uh, for the park, as well as the uh, individual departments, as well as operations as a whole. Uh, it was a good event. Uh, we, we crammed it into about a, a half a day. Um, but in the strengths, we, um, first of all, I'll take a step back. We wanted to, the theme of it was um, we need to be servant leaders, servants of the park, um, servants of, you know, our, our members, our boards, our board of directors. Um, so we need to be servant leaders in the park. And, and so how do we do that? Um, and the theme was uh, let's not, just because we've done things this way for many years, does not necessarily mean that's the best way to do it. Let's think of new ways to do things. And if those make sense, let's go do them. If it doesn't, then we'll cross off the list and we'll move on. So then we broke them out and we identified 59 strengths and that um, 
uh, process, and the top strengths that we identified were financial stability, uh, the strength of our staff here at Sandy Pines, park amenity, amenities, uh, recreation activities, um, a safe and secure environment, so our security team is, is um, doing a great job, and the relationships with the board of directors and the members is uh, really a strength of this park. Um, weaknesses, there were 49 weaknesses that we identified. Um, <clears throat> Top ones that came to mind from the team that were, were touched on the most. Cross-training of our staff. Um, again, we'll take Kelly Blackman as an example. Um, when she was out sick, there was a lot of the other team that didn't know how to handle her job or what to do. So there wasn't cross-training involved. Um, recreation, uh, execution, scheduling, communication. So we had really good plans for our recommends. Um, but some of them went to the wayside with, we didn't execute them real well. So how do we execute them better? Uh, policies, procedures, open um, an, an operating manual. So how do we run the park? There's not a lot of um, policies and procedures that are documented that if I get hit by a bus or can really get hit by a bus, what do we do? How do we do it? What's the playbook? <clears throat> Outdated systems and technology. There's a lot of paper pushing, old forms, handwritten filled up forms, and um, we need training across the board. We turn those into opportunities, so we're going to try and turn those weaknesses into opportunities. And then um, threats, there were 46 identified threats. Um, you know, what, what can threaten this park? Um, the, really the top four were, um, we're getting to a point where is the park being overdeveloped? Um, do we have, are we, do we have too many sites? Um, outdated systems and technology, uh, lake erosion, and um, some of the inability to uh, make changes uh, in, in, a, in a timely manner. So um, it was a really good event. And then what that did was, as we broke that down, each department um, has to identify their goals. And so in the handout, there's a dashboard and we're sitting down with each department, and I just highlighted really five departments, um, finance, HR, member services, communications, and public safety. And each of them have goals that we're gonna monitor on a, uh, on a monthly or quarterly basis, depending on how the departments wanna monitor that. And um, you know, we'll, we'll hold them accountable to you know, making the changes that they said they were gonna make. So, Overall, it was a uh, it was a well received event, um, and the team was working hard to try and make improvements throughout not only their apartments but the uh, the park. Any uh, any comments or questions on it? Okay, so stay tuned. Um, <clears throat> last couple of things, um, we generated an open projects list, and we've got twenty five different open projects that. Um, come across the operations desk, whether it's from the membership, uh, committees, board of directors, um, our staff. We've got 25 um, plus projects. We're not going to implement them all in this year, but they're <coughs> projects that, you know, quite honestly, um, total a, a lot of money. Uh, you're looking at, you know, 13 plus million dollars that, that these projects total. Um, so we're in the process of prioritizing those projects. and. Are they in the budget? Are they not in the budget? Do we need to get them in the budget next year or four years following? Can we get grants for them? Um, so we're tracking those as well. And then um, a couple of the top projects that we're looking at, uh, one is um, we've gotten a lot of feedback from members who want to you know, sell their sites or new members that want to come in and buy their sites. Um, we used to have financing options. So. Um, we have gone out and we've taken a look at, you know, financial institutions. Will they lend to our members? Um, our, our roadblock to that is um, generally a lending institution wants to attach real land property to that, to that loan. And obviously we know that we have memberships, not, not real land property um, for loans. So we've got a couple of options that we'll continue to explore and we'll review with the board. Um, but we are working on that project. One of, the, one of the options are, do we want to be our own lenders? 
Do we want to take a line of credit and open up our own lending process? Another one is um, a credit union has approached us and said, you know, we'll, we'll lend to you. We understand that there's no real property attached to these loans, but are you willing to share in the risk and put some money in a pot if there are any defaults on those loans? So I know that question has come through my office many times as to, hey, do we have a lending op option yet? Because there's people that want to buy and or sell in this park, and uh, we want to maintain the value of the sites. Uh, we are working on those, and uh, we've got a couple of really good options that we're trying to narrow down for the, for the members. Um, PA 330 update. Um, so Keith and the team are doing a really good job on um, training. So the first step of that is get the staff trained in various areas. If you look through that dashboard, um, Keith has the majority of his goals are training his staff to be PA 330 compliant. Uh, so we can be self, uh, basically self-policing when we need to be. Um, there's some renderings of some drawings up on, on the board in the back if you want to take a look at those. Um, in order to do that, um, there needs to be a main gate improvement. Um, and looking at, with our engineers, the main gate in its current uh, site, in its current status, um, there's not enough room in that site or in that area of that um, main gate location to expand and be PA330 compliant. And the cost to revamp the current building would be just as much as it would to build a brand new site. So we've had some drawings rendered, uh, a couple of locations that we're talking about um, for a potential new main gate um, would be back here by administration. Um, where this staff gate is in front of building and maintenance and in the um, retail center would be one area that, that we're looking at. Really that's what that drawing is uh, rendering on. So we are marching down the path. First we get the, the staff compliant with certifications, training, that'll take um, probably through the rest of this year. And then we need to start looking at how do we uh, be compliant from a building standpoint. Um, another factor that we're trying to look at, um, because we know we're tight on budget, is are there any grants available to um, make that uh, new building, if we go that route, a storm shelter as well. And we know we've done two really successful FEMA grants um, on storm shelters. Um, can, can we do another one and, and use that as a main gate um, grant to get some funds out of that as well? And then the last thing I have in the handout um, is just some options. Uh, we've got, rumor has it, we have a big 50th anniversary coming up in a year or so. So um, these are some ideas that uh, we reviewed with uh, our event planner that we're exploring. And we'll release these to some of the committees and some of the members as well. Um, take a look at that and appreciate any feedback or comment on those, on those events. Um, it's a, it's a really good list. Uh, Josh and the, and the team have been working really hard to come up with some special stuff for the 50th, um, but appreciate any and all input. So that's all I have. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, um, Well, no, um, yes. uh, 49 new members. Oh, good. Okay, good. So obviously somebody's finding finances. So. <laughs> I said the loss of financing happened quite some time ago when the sales have not stopped. The sales have the not sales stopped. Actually and when you when you look at some of the data, the data is about eighty two percent of our sales are between ten thousand and eighty thousand that sale price. And so they're they are finding financing somewhere. That's good. Okay, we're gonna move on to um, the financial issues. Um, we're going to be discussing and voting on the August, September, and October financial statements for Sandy Pines and the golf course. Uh, Jenny, as the finance committee chair, do you have anything you'd like to share? Um, I don't have anything specific. Um, everybody, I'm sure, went through them, looked through um, Kimberly's notes. Um, 
I didn't hear anything from you guys. Anything major? I didn't have any. That's how my amazing finance team right there. They are. There's a couple that aren't here. <coughs> Thanks for coming. We, we don't have a, we don't have a quorum of the finance committee. So the board has to approve the finance. Right. 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 Thanks okay. for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for taking mm -hmm. time out of your day. Kimberly, do you have some generalized notes that you want to? Yeah, I can summarize some of the key things that I outlined just for the membership um, and so forth. Um, we are reviewing August and September, so I'll go over that first because those will be the first approvals. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll go over Sandy Pines um, for September. August is all inclusive in September. Um, so as of the end of our fiscal year, operations cash was up 26% as of the end of the year. Our Shabbat investment account was up 8%, which is a big change from last year at this time. Um, our member accounts receivables down 23%, so that has an offset on um, the cash. So we've noticed that a lot of member accounts um, have been up to date, um, which is driving a good cash um, prospect for us too. Um, the other accounts receivable um, has been cleared with the condo association um, with that project com coming to a completion. Um, so we see that at the end of this fiscal year. The remaining 75000 on the Sandy Pines Golf Course AR has been fully paid off as of the end of this fiscal year. So that's just leaving the phase six golf course accounts receivable um, lent to the golf course. And that total amount is 705825 our current liabilities are up just less than 1%. And total net income is 47,000 47, um, net loss. Um, I just want to reiterate, we are a not-for-profit organization, so we tend, our goal is to break even. Um, and maybe on the positive side, and sometimes that doesn't outweigh, but if we are on the positive side, we pay tax on that, and that's not our intent. Um, but I also did have a footnote um, at the end that there was a late invoice that came at the end of last fiscal year that really would have offset that. Um, we'll be working with our accountants on that as well. Um, and that would have thrown us just over the net income side of 39%. So we're sitting in a very good financial position. Um, a note I have is that we're well within the acceptable um, parks not-for-profit filing status. Um, operations were overall strong, um, yet administration will continue to focus on areas of improvement. Um, and I had other notes for the membership and stuff on each of the or for the board on each of the departments, um, but I will highlight that in one of my future articles as well, um, just to save some time. And there wasn't anything major to highlight on the departments, but the financial statements will be provided online as well for review. Are there any questions on September's independent statements or the check registers that were sent out? August and September. August and September. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and there were copies on the back table too. Does anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. This is just Sandy Pines. Okay. Um, could I have a motion to approve the August and September 2019 mm -hmm. financial statements for well, Sandy Pines? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Either one. Either one. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Mm -hmm. So then I will just highlight a few items on our um, Lake Monterey Golf Course. Um, the operations cash was down 35% as of the fiscal year end, um, 2019, which is expected with the 75,000 note payable and payoff, um, but we were still um, in a reasonable cash, ba cash basis. The Lake Monterey Golf Course Operations um, capital, um, capital Reserve cash amount was up 58%, um, and that's with current reserves for future projects that um, is just being set aside. Our total current liabilities are down $55. Long-term liabilities, the remaining $75,000 of that note payable paid off in the same note. It's just leaving the larger note payable um, from phase six of 
total net income for the golf course was 10% lower than prior year, and but 79.6% over budget. So they did very good in comparison to budget. Um, the weekend green fees were up 56% from prior year. Power carts were up 17% over prior year, 53% over budget. The food sales were 14,000 lower than last year, or 14% lower than last year. Um, and beer and wine and merchandising were just 1% lower than prior year. So our sales in those departments um, were just a little bit lower, but still above budget. Other operating income was 9% lower than the prior year and 0.6% lower than budget. So we were kind of right on there. Um, other than that, um, I don't have any other notes specifically for Lake Monterey, unless there are any questions. Just to clarify, I think you meant on the total current liabilities, they're down 55%. I think you said most of the dollars. Oh, 55%. Yeah, 55 55,000. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. yeah. I yeah. it, Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. I meant to say that the current total liabilities were down 55,000. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Does anyone have any further questions or comments? Thank you. Um, Lake Michigan Golf Course, August and September. Could I have a motion to approve? So moved. Support. Approve. Call. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, now on mm. to the October yep. 2019 Sandy Pines. So as of October 2019, we're just in our first month of the year at that point, and the fiscal year, and um, there's not a whole lot of activity, but just some notes to mention. Current cash equivalents um, were up approximately 800,000, or 14.5% over prior year. Total member accounts receivable was down approximately 325,000 from prior year. So again, we're seeing a lot more um, early payments on our memberships and stuff, which is a good sign. Buildings asset value was up almost 300,000 over prior year, um, so that we had some major construction within the park, and so you can see that in the value of our buildings um, um, and our total assets. Current liabilities are down 111,000, or 37% increase, and total net income as of October 2019, is 6.8% up from prior year. Um, there are certain things that um, did relate to that, and I wanted to mention. Um, sales and hospitality gross income was up 30% from prior year. That specifically related to site rentals that are 25% higher. So a lot of um, guests looking at um, their summer plans. Um, and then seasonal sites were up 30%. And when I did a comparison of that account to last year, I noticed that there are a lot more, the billings for the seasonal sites um, were put up there earlier than last year. So they're full in capacity. So you're just going to see that recorded in the financial statements earlier rather than later. So I just wanted to point that out to not be misleading. Um, recreation gross income is up 74% um, and 32% when you net that against um, cost of goods sold um, from prior year. A lot of that is attributable to the successful fall fest that we did this last, um, at the end of the season. Retail center gross income is down 26%. Um, a lot of that is related to the gasoline and bulk pen income. Overall, total operating expenses are down 118,000, or 35%. Um, utilities, you'll notice, is down 56%. Repair and maintenance expenses up 28.9%. And other operating expenses is 50,000, um, is showing up 50,000. Um, I apologize. Okay, there was um, an entry for charter. There was a few issues with our charter billings um, that we had to hold on for <coughs> some negotiations that we're working on with charter and kind of clearing some things out. And we did have some late November billings that were paid. And so, but they were related to the fiscal 2019 fiscal year. So they were recorded in fiscal year 19, reversed in October. So you're gonna see 
an unusual reversal credit under charter, which will clear out in November. So, but it was just in order to get that booked into the um, fiscal year 19 financial statements. So that did have an effect on that total net income as well. Um, investments income in October 2019 is up significantly from prior year. Um, and other than that, um, those were my notes for Sandy Pines in October. Okay, are there any further questions or comments about the October financial statements? Okay, can I have a motion to approve the October 2019 financial statements for mm -hmm. Sandy Pines? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same sign. Motion passes. Okay, and then um, Mike Monterey for October 2019, our current cash equivalents is down 30%, um, and buildings are up 5%, and land improvements are up 51% from prior year. Um, the land improvements we did put a new well in at the golf course, so a lot of that improvement is related to that. Current liabilities are down 63%, and then um, our the other net loss is up 31.4%. Um, so obviously there's no revenue coming in at this time at the golf course. However, I have noticed some golf cart carts venturing over there with some of our um, unusual seasonal weather. Um, but Overall, um, we're looking good with where our expenses are as of this point in October. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> Could we have a motion to approve? So many. Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. <clears throat> Okay, we're going to move on to some old business. There's a um, resolution that needs to be approved that has to do with authorizing financial signatures for Lake Michigan Golf Course. Jeff, did, was this, it was corrected from a previous one that didn't include Lake Michigan Golf Course? Yes. Lake, Lake Monterey Golf Course? Yes. Okay. Do I need to read the whole thing? Is that necessary into the record? You could read it in the record, okay. but um, I know that's what's usually done. Okay. Okay, resolution, Sandy Pines resolution number 121719. Resolution to authorize certain officials of Sandy Pines Wilderness Trails Incorporated to sign checks, certificates of deposit, and other evidence of investments and to authorize at least two signatures on certain banking documents. Whereas the Board of Directors of Sandy Pines Wilderness Trails Incorporate, Incorporated believes it is necessary to authorize certain officials to sign checks, certificates of deposit, and other evidence of investments, and whereas the Board of Directors also believes it is necessary to have at least two officials sign these documents now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Directors of Sandy Pines Wilderness Trails Incorporated does hereby authorize the following named individuals to sign checks, certificates of deposits, and other evidence of investments or transactions for Lake Monterey Golf Course effective September 20th, 2019. Jeffrey Schweitzer, Park President, and Kimberly Williams, Chief Financial, Financial Officer. Okay. Could we have a motion to accept? Second. Okay, Kimberly, could you do a? I have a question before we go. Okay. Do we? Is it just two, or God forbid, one or the two of you might be unavailable to do that? Do we have a third, or what's the <clears throat> process involved with that? Right now, it's just two. Right now, it's just two. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> And can you electronically sign them? In other words, you don't have to be physically there. Is that <coughs> we are, process set up? Uh, we you can do it just right. on your HP. So back to um, outdated technology in IT. Didn't we? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, uh, we, are, we are physically hand signing checks right now. Um, part of what Kimberly and I have talked about are ACH payments where you can 
log into the website, it's all staged, and then you can do your yep. approval based on your password um, and or some e-signatures. So we're not there yet, um, but we got to get there. It would seem to be incumbent either that or have a third person or one right. or the other. <clears throat> Absolutely. So right now it's just it's just the two of us. It's Kimberly and myself. Fair enough. Good question. No. Roll call. Yeah. No. Um, Brian Melling. Yes. Jenny Hager. Yes. Jim Huff. Yes. Kelly Johnson. Yes. Chad Ostrom. Yes. Paul Peppo. Yes. Alan Carpenter. Yes. Approved seven zero. Okay, the next item on the agenda is new business. Do we have any new business from the board that anybody would like to bring up? Hearing none. Um, can I yes. just bring one thing up for sure. the minutes? Um, yes. In the minutes under the new business, uh -huh. it was discussed about the planning meeting. Uh -huh. It was tabled to the next meeting. Okay. About the decision, unless you want to table that to the next meeting. With Jim being gone, do you want to table it to the next meeting? Yes. Yeah. It was can we, do we vote on that to table it? I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Could we have a motion to table that? Until the next and it wasn't meeting. on the agenda, so yeah. but um, it was just something that was in the minutes. So. Okay. Yeah. Could we have a motion to table? What was that for the planning commission? Yeah. yeah. The the planning planning meeting. Meeting. Planning. Oh, the planning meeting. Oh, the planning meeting. Yeah. Because then that was right. discussed yeah. at the last yeah, we meeting, had a... and then said that after discussion that would be held until the next board meeting. Right. Okay. Yeah. Does everybody understand what we're tabling? Not exactly. Okay. Sorry. In the in the last. Board meeting, we talked about changing the planning sessions to make them a, a closed meeting or a closed session because they aren't a meeting. We talked about it, yeah. And what we said we would do is that after further discussion at a board meeting, we would vote on it. And since it was not on the agenda and we have not Got discussed it. It, Got it, then we need to vote to table that until the next meeting. Understood. So we're tabling the table. I'll motion what you said. Okay. Because <laughs> you said it's so perfect. Yes. I'll okay. second that. Okay. It, 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 before you ask for the motion, and, and that would allow that then to be discussed, recorded, shared, mm -hmm. obtain feedback, and then vote. Of course. So kind of full step. Kind of a two step process. Yep. Very yep. good. Right. <clears throat> that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, at this time, first of all, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and safe and happy and healthy New Year upcoming. And we're all looking forward to next year and the year after that when we have our, our anniversary. So I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I got a question, Matt. Okay. I've seen it several times out by the church. People, members, passing cards to people outside of the park. I've I have taken their number down and reported to the uh, rangers, and it don't seem like I get no response. I mean, I realize they got a big park here. They got to take care of. But my wife and I, we've seen it so many times, and I reported it, and nothing seems to get done. And I, I'm kind of fed up about it. I, I, I'd like to let you know, I've personally witnessed them many times responding to that. That's a huge thing. With the cameras, they are consistently monitoring the cameras, and if anybody's waiting at a gate, uh, whoever's on duty will call the PSO officer that is doing the rounds and send them directly there to stop that from happening. It's going to be an ongoing thing forever, but they are combating it, and, and they are addressing it. But I approached this one kid, I says, they're not members, and he ran over there and swept the card, and they, they got in. And I don't think that's right. I mean, no, it's not. But all the members are paying, you mm -hmm. know, and, I, yeah. and I, I'm kind of upset about it. When you report that, if they can identify a time and they can see it on the camera, they also know who swiped the card. The, the, the thing with that is you may not see 
their response, but they do investigate those things and they do know what card is being swiped and they can go back and look at that footage. And I've been over, because I'm in phase three and I've been over in that area and I've seen them monitoring that from a distance. And they have intervened in some cases and there have been people that have, have been dealt with in that. You just may not see that happening. But it's, it's just going to be an ongoing issue. I'm a member of the Safety and Security Committee and that's one of the things that we strive <coughs> to correct. But please keep reporting it. Yeah, Don't right, get discouraged. Right in that vicinity of, of the chapel, there are either four or five cameras that are consistently being monitored. Oh, everybody knows that that's a, it's a soft point. Yeah. yeah, but I know I just had the feeling that they didn't, you know, check it. And I realize that yeah, the Rangers can't be all over it and, and with stuff like that, but I just wanted to bring that up. Yep, but keep reporting can, it, please. And if you can report the time, you know, or very close to it, that yeah. lets them narrow their review down and it makes it easier for them to find it too. And, and if somebody doesn't respond, pay attention to who you, who you report it to. Um, because at that point, we can, we can talk to Keith or um, uh, Chris, whoever's on duty, and, and uh, they can address the issue with the person who didn't you know, react accordingly. Sure. <clears throat> and don't shy away from not reporting it, though. Right. <laughs> Let's Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Okay, can we have a, a all in favor of adjourning? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign? Motion carries. <laughs>